Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at styling forms, just very basically, just enough for them to look nice. And this obviously includes responsive as well. So as the container that surrounds your forms gets smaller, everything still looks fine. So this is uh, a sort of visual image of what we're going to be building. You can see here that we've just got a text area. We've got a just a normal input of text. We've also got a checkbox here as well. We're using labels to um, allow for accessibility. And we're also going to be styling these submit buttons or buttons as well, just to give a little bit of padding and make everything a little bit larger. So on a smaller device, things are more accessible. But you can obviously chop and change these forms. This will work with radio buttons as well, uh, as well as a variety of other different input types. So let's go ahead and start styling a basic HTML form out to look like this. OK, so we're starting out with uh, nothing at all here. We've got a basic document uh, with just um, a a character encoding, uh, title and we've also got this style sheet linked in within a CSS folder and that's just called main.css we have nothing in there at all at the moment though so we're starting uh, in terms of CSS completely from scratch but what we're first going to do is we're going to build out this form just so we can see what it looks like in the browser without any styling but I'm going to wrap this all in a container so I'm going to create a div element here with a class of container and this is just going to act as my viewport, if you like. This is a very uh, rough example of how we can just create a container and uh, basically just uh, set a width and a maximum width as well. You can just adjust that to see how uh, this responds. So I'm going to create a width of 100% here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a maximum width just to stop it there. That means that when we resize the browser window, everything within it will squash in as much as possibly can. There are obviously better ways to create a container, but this depends on where you're building everything. So let's put that down there so it's out of the way. And let's start to actually build our markup. Then we'll look at what it looks like. And then we'll discuss how we're going to go ahead and actually style it. So let's create our form. We obviously have an action in a form and we have a method, but we're just going to leave these blank for now. Now I'm going to set autocomplete to off just so that the uh, suggestions don't pop up and annoy us. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to create things like our input type of text, which you may have already seen before, and our text area and our checkbox. But we're going to put these within label elements. And this means that what we can do is uh, to aid accessibility, have a label associated with that input. So for example, I'm going to create a label here and end it there. And what I'm then going to do is inside give the label that I would want to see. So, for example, title. Now, underneath, I can then put my input, say type of text, give it a name, give it any classes I need to, whatever I need to do, really. So in this case, it's just going to be an input type of text. And I'm going to say name, title. So let's take a look at what this looks like. It's going to look a little bit messy. You can see that the text box is very small. You won't typically find text boxes this small anymore. Um, and the title is just next to it. We can notice we can actually click the title, which is really good. And that will actually focus on in on this box. That's a, a handy way that we use a label like this. OK, so let's do pretty much the same thing here. But let's use a text area instead. So let's imagine this is the body of some kind of post. We create a text area element here, like so. And I'm going to give this a name of body. We don't really need to do this. Now, this is more important, the rows. Now, I'm not going to use styling to control the height. I'm going to use rows. There's nothing really wrong with this necessarily. But we are controlling the width of this element with CSS. You don't want to use the cols attribute. So when I refresh now, we get this. It's starting to look completely messy. So we'll, uh, we'll fix this up in a moment. Now, the last thing I want to add before we look at adding the checkbox a little bit later is an input type of submit. So this will be obviously the button that submits this form through. And we can give that a value as well. We can call it post or something like that. And there we go. It's down there. 
So this all looks a little bit of a mess. It's uh, all in line uh, by default. We've got our little post button down here. It doesn't look great, obviously. So how can we resolve this? Well, we're going to head over to our style sheet. The first thing that I'm going to do is give a body font and then we'll incorporate our input and text area into this as well. Now I'm just doing this rough. So I'm going to say 1M and Georgia. This can be anything. There's obviously better uh, options for the typography on your website. So now you'll notice that the uh, styling has changed here, but also inside of this as well, if I just zoom in, uh, this has changed as well. So if I write title, um, uh, sorry, this hasn't changed. So you can see that the, the font in here remains the default. So we can combat that by literally just input text area. You may even have a separate body um, element because you might be adding things like widths and heights here or background. So you may want to separate these two from the body. Uh, but either way, you want body input and text area to contain this. So now what's going to happen is you'll notice that this actually has the same font size and it has the same font as well. Now that was also, if we just go back to 100%, that's also increased the size of these boxes just because of the nature of uh, the font size that we've used. But we're going to do better than that. So the first thing I want to do is just give my form a margin bottom of 20 pixels, just so wherever we place it, there's always going to be that nice gap underneath. Now for the input, the text area and button elements, what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be creating a separate version of this submit button using the button element like so. In fact, we can actually add it in now. That might just make sense. And we'll be targeting the input here, the text area, and the button. And we're going to be giving these a padding of 10 pixels. And we're going to be giving these a width of 100%. Now, the reason we've done that is because we want the input and the text area to have a width of 100%. And uh, the button, we want to have padding too, as well as these two. We're going to reset this a little bit later, though, because we will find out that we don't want the button to have a width of 100%. And we also don't want an input type of submit to have a width of 100% because that's the button for your form. So now what you'll see is we get something that looks like this. Now, it already looks slightly better because we've got a, a full width um, element here. And we've also added the padding in there. So you can see that we've got a little bit of room around here. So it just looks a little bit nicer, easier for on smaller devices as well for the user to just hit uh, hit it with their finger and, and be done with it. So we need to fix the issue of these buttons um, being too, too large, basically. Um, but let's go on to looking at actually making the label here uh, have a little bit of a margin on the bottom just so these aren't so close together so remember we're wrapping all of our elements within label so what we can actually do here is we can say label margin bottom of 20 pixels so that's then going to push everything down that's wrapped within a label and you'll see this hasn't actually worked the reason being is that a label is display inline if we just pull up our developer tools uh, we'll inspect this pull up our developer tools you'll be able to see that we have a display of inline just here. So we can fix that. Down here, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say label and input. Remember, that includes things like uh, our input types of text. Oh, and our text box as well, or text area as well. So let's add that in there. We want these to have a display or block. And there we go. Now that that's got a display of block, you can see that we have our orange bottom as well. Now you'll also notice that the padding has actually pushed the um, inputs away from the um, width of the actual container. So what we may want to do is we may want to add in here box sizing border box. And that will change the box model. So what's actually going to happen then is this is going to fit nicely within it. The padding isn't going to push this out. Now there are vendor prefixes for this. We're not going to go too much into that. You might want to look that up so you can support uh, older browsers or different browsers to the one that you're currently using. So we've done a display block on this, but now what we want to do 
is actually reset this for some of these elements. So we're going to specifically define here input type of submit. We also want to reset the styles for the input type checkbox and the input type of radio as well. And we also don't want the button to be 100% uh, width either. So we can say a width of auto on these and we can say display inline like so. So that sorts out the problem with the buttons. You'll notice the subtle difference or the, the fairly big difference between these here. And you'll notice that if we were to, for example, add a specific border to these, that actually does sort of solve the problem. Now there are subtle differences between these two, but you can go ahead and figure out how to do this. Just play around with the styling and see what you can do. And don't forget to ch check that cross browser. I'm going to leave this out for now though. And let's just go ahead and for the sake of it, just get rid of say the input type of submit, which is the one that's uh, a little bit trickier here. So we've now got our title, our body and our post, and it's looking okay. We've got a, label text up here which may could do with a little bit of uh, um, sort of spacing between that and the actual element so let's go ahead and change that as well so what we're going to do is we're going to say label and within that label we want to target our input and we also want then within a label want to target our text area and then we're going to do a margin top here of 10 pixels so let's take a look at preview this perfect now you'll notice that earlier I did uh, an input type of checkbox and radio let's just remove them for now and see why we need to do this with the width auto and the display inline so let's add in here a label and I'm just gonna say sign up for my newsletter and then here I'm gonna do an input type of checkbox I'm going to give this a name of newsletter. Okay, so you'll notice that this now actually has a display of block. And if we just take a look at the actual styles, we've got a margin top, which is fine, a display of block and a width of 100%, which is pushing this down. It's not letting this text naturally sit next to it as it normally would. So when we add that in, what we're doing is we're, we're taking away the 100% width that we applied up here. And we're also saying we want this to be a display inline rather than a display block. And what that will then do is allow that to just naturally sit next to it as an inline element would. So let's finally just test the container. So I'm going to set the max width to 200 pixels. So imagine you're scaling your browser in. You can see that this scales in nicely. If you had, say, a slightly larger container at 600 pixels, uh, these will move out as well. So depending on what kind of system you're using to lay your website out, you might be using a grid system. Uh, you might just be using containers or one container that perhaps just handles... Uh, uh, everything and everything sits within it, then uh, these will automatically fill uh, the width of that container. So there we go. We have basically styled some uh, elements. We've not done everything here because uh, that was, you know, always a little bit tricky depending on your requirements, but you should have a general idea about how to style out uh, a page like this. I've also just noticed that we have this small post here. Now, if we were to uh, add button to this list of fonts that, or the font that we added to this list of elements later, that's going to uh, go ahead and increase that for you. So we've now finished off with a nice looking form, very, very basic CSS for this, but uh, we'll work cross browser.